So we'll just double click Megatron here to jump over to the host and we're in the configuration networking uh, tab again and we're over here at the vSphere distributed switch side of the house. So I want to show you this. We've seen kind of this image before but in case you don't, you've never really messed with it, here on the right we have our physical uplinks. So again, if this was a vSphere distributed switch, you'd only have one as it only allows one uplink. But with the Nexus, we can do more. So we've got our prod uplink we created, the DMZ uplink we created, and the unused or quarantine that the switch auto creates. We've only got physical NICs in the prod, so that's the only one that has a connection here. We can open those, and you'll see VM NIC 2 and VM NIC 3. If we click the NICs, I'm sorry, click the I next to the NICs, there we go. You'll see basically CDP information, the Nexus information, what our port ID is for that NIC, etc., etc. So there's some stuff there. On the left, we've got our port groups and any VMs connected. So we've only got one VM in right now. That's a Media XP on VLAN 5. You can click this, and it's just a bit of information about it. Uh, some of this stuff isn't really usable except with the vSphere distributed switch, so it's kind of, you know, not really worth a whole lot. And you can click I next to the Media XP, and it gives you the virtual uh, port ID for the distributed switch in vCenter. The port status is up, the MAC address, things like that. Also, two things. One, sometimes when I click expand or do something, you'll notice that it jumps to the top of the screen. That's a GUI bug that I really wish VMware would fix because I'm tired of dealing with it, especially when I've got three pages of stuff here and I'm constantly going back and forth. The other thing is, I mentioned this uh, when we we're talking about adding VLANs back in the basic configuration lab, that if you create a port profile for a VLAN, like let's say I never actually created VLAN 5, but I created this port group and I added a, a VM's NIC to it, when I say it would show up in blocking, this right here instead of being green would have an X through it. And that's how you know it's in blocking mode. And that usually the cause of that is that we never actually created the VLAN on the switch. So just FYI. Now. The only real work we can do here is the manage virtual and manage physical. Properties just sets the total number of ports designated for the host. 256 is good for a single host in most cases. If you do need more switch ports than that per host, you can bump that, but usually you don't. And here we've got two things. So first is manage physical adapters. Well, this is pretty simple, and I'll collapse this, but it shows again our three uplink configs. If you want to add NICs, you click click to add, or you can actually do it under each uplink if you want them in a certain order. And if you want to remove NICs, you click remove. So for NICs that you didn't roll over during the migration piece when we added the host to the switch, you can just do it right here. Same thing on DMZ, you can just add them right there. And of course you can click the NICs, let's see there, and it gives you your information here. You can change your duplex and speed, but again, not a whole lot to do. Cancel. And then virtual adapters. So when by virtual adapters, what we really mean are VM kernel interfaces. That's really the only virtual adapters we can do. Now here it doesn't list any. The reason being is it only lists ones that exist on the distributed switch, and we don't have any. So let's add. So you have two options. New, where we create a new VM kernel interface, or migrate existing. So this lets you migrate one from an existing vSwitch over to the distributed switch. And we'll do that here in a minute. But I want to walk you through how I test my first host on a Nexus switch. So I'm going to do new. And your only option here is VM kernel. So why they give you the screen, I don't know. I think it's just for informational purposes, but there you go. Next. And then which port group do we want to add it to? So I'm going to add it to VLAN 5. Then you can say, do you want to use it for vMotion, for FT, for management? I'm just going to say management. Next. And give it an IP address. Let me jump out a window here. Excuse that. I want to make sure I knew which IP I was going to use. So we'll do 182.168.200.98. Let me open up a DOS window here. Ping 182.168.200.98. And it should not respond. And it doesn't. So there we go. And we get the same image we've seen a few times. But again, it highlights in yellow what's being done and it's adding the .98 VM kernel interface. So we'll say finish and let that go. Now if that pings successfully and we see VMK2 here added, we can click it and it shows all your information. Do that again. And if we do this and it works successfully, which it is because we're getting responses now, we know that basically our uplink config is working. Well we knew that already because we had looked at you know a VM. 
but what I want to show is how I would test it if you had an iSCSI or fault tolerance or an NFS uh, port group that you're going to dedicate for that, maybe a different VLAN. And I don't want you just to roll your existing VM kernels over and cross your fingers and hope it works because if it doesn't work, you can end up in a really bad spot with an isolated host. You know, I can't get to it for management. It drops offline. And then I'm using the uh, ESXi command line interface console on the host to rebuild switching to get back to it. It's a lot easier to do this on the front end instead of fixing that on the back end. And so, you know, I would create one of those, make sure I can ping it, and make sure they could talk. So, okay, now we know our VM kernel works. We know VLAN 5 works. I would have tested the other, maybe control, maybe packet, something like that. And then I go back to manage. First thing I'm going to do is delete this guy because I don't need him anymore. So remove. Yes. And then I want to add. And I want to migrate. I'm going to go ahead and migrate my existing two. So you don't have to do them all. You can select the boxes. Here's the name. Here's the current vSwitch. And what port group do you want to attach these to? Both of mine are going to be 5 because I'm using 5 for almost everything here. Okay. Next. And it's going to show you yet again what it's about to do. It adds VM kernel 0 and 1 into the VLAN 5 port group. So off it goes and they should show up here. A couple other things. You can highlight one. Again, you got your information here. You can hit edit. This is where you change things. If you want to set jumbo frames, that's where you set jumbo frames right here. Let's see, VM kernel. I was going to say one of these should be 9,000. There it is. So edit, and that's where you'll set your MTU. If you want jumbo frames, you set it for 9,000 there, and your IP settings here. Uh, let's see. Remove is remove. You saw that. Migrate is what happens if I want to roll this back to a standard switch. Maybe I want to remove this guy from the Nexus 1000V or a distributed switch. How do I get these VM kernels back? I just migrated them over. Well, you can hit this and migrate them back. and It'll say which switch, give me a name, all that sort of thing. And it'll let you roll them back over to the standard switch. FYI, you want to make really sure that there's some physical NICs uh, added as uplinks on those old V switches before you do that. Else you're going to again going to strand the host. So now that we've migrated those over, uh, that's it. We're now ready to do the virtual machine. So if we look, we've got a number of VMs that we need to roll over as well. You'll notice here my VSMs are on the same host. That's a no-no, but we'll fix that. So let's go ahead. There's an easy way to migrate VMs. Go to Home, go back to Networking, choose your switch, Summary tab, Migrate Virtual Machine Networking. So you basically can do a source and a destination. So Think of this as search and replace. Search for this, replace with that. If you have multiple distributed switches, you can even filter by a distributed switch or by network. Pretty simple. All right. So the top one I'm going to do most of them are going to be VM Network, which is my original VM, and the VLAN 5. Really probably should have named those to match. But if I had, you could see the distributed switch name here, but I didn't. I should have done that. We'll go next. It's going to list a bunch of VMs. The ones grayed out are on hosts that are not currently part of the Nexus switch. Therefore, we cannot change those. They do not have access to these new port groups yet. When I check the box, it's going to tell me that. Ding. Hey, I can't do some of these. Okay, I know that's fine. I just want you to change the ones that you can. So what it's going to do is it's going to go through each of those and do a search and replace. If they have multiple NICs, you can expand them out. You can see them. Pretty simple. But we'll say OK next and then you'll see a bunch of tasks kick off down here at the bottom. Now I need to do this a couple of times because I've got a couple of networks. Control, oops I don't want to go to same control to same control. It's going to pick up some of the VSMs. Next, next. Do packet. It's going to pick up some of the VSMs. It's exciting I know. And we'll do one more, which is external. That's the outside interface of my firewall. Yep. And off they go. So when you do that, this is why I said it's minor disruption as you roll hosts and VMs over. Uh, as you do this, you may drop a frame or two because it's basically flipping that network configuration. It's just like you're going into edit settings on a VM and making that change. So it does the same thing. It just automates it. Now we can look at the switch and say, oh, look, those are all the VMs currently running on this switch, just like we can look at the host. So let's jump back over to Mr. Megatron again. Let me do a quick check of the VMs to make sure I haven't forgotten anything here. Nexus, Nexus. 
check that guy. Da, da, da. Those are all moved over, so I think we should be good. Actually, there's a quick way to check. I always forget this. If you go to Configuration tab, Network, da -da, there's no VMs listed in any of these port groups. That means they no longer exist, so there's no VMs still there. I have seen some odd occurrences where the GUI would still show a VM like attached to VM Network 5, but you go look at the VM settings, and it's on the distributed switch, and it is on the distributed switch. You see it both places, and there's nothing here, but it's a weird GUI bug. So if you see that, don't be too alarmed. Just confirm after you kind of like shift everything over, make sure that VM's all good and happy. And now the last thing we need to do is do the physical adapter. So we'll go back over here to manage physical. And I'm going to add, I'll collapse this, add two more NICs to prod. So I will go click to add, VM NIC1, say OK. It says, do you want to remove it from the existing switch and connect it? Yes, yes I do. And I'll add the next one. Do you want me to do that? Yes, yes I do. And so as soon as I hit OK, it'll go through this. You'll see the two uplinks get added on over here. There they are. Now I'm going to show you back in the interface here on the VSM real quick. I've had an issue with the, actually this guy right here where it has an X. For some reason, when I'm rolling it over, uh, it's showing me an error. We'll see if it still does it. And we can confirm this with there's no more physical adapters and no more VMs. So Mr. Megatron is now running 100% through the Nexus 1000V.